Hi Perry Elementary students and families. My name is Faith and today I'll be reading to you guys The Mitten, adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. And after we're done reading, I have a little activity that everyone can enjoy and join in on. So stick around for that. So let's get on with the book. The Mitten, adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first his grandmother Baba did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop them in the snow, she warned, you'll never be able to find them. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba agreed to make them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, First I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you have your new mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped into the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside of it. It was cozy and warm, in just the right size, and he decided to stay. So in the mole goes into the mitten. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat, but then he saw the mitten and he wiggled in, feet first. The mole didn't think there was enough room for the both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's great big kickers, he decided to move over. So in the rabbit goes with the mole into the mitten. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered in prickles, they made room. So in he goes to the mitten. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down when he decided to move in also. The mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled, but when they saw the owl's big glinty talons, they quickly let him in. So off he goes into the mitten with everyone else. Up through the snow appeared a badger mole. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but once they saw his great big diggers, they gave him the thumb. So in the badger goes. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and the fox, trotting by, stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in when the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth. They gave the fox a lot of room. So in he goes with everyone else. A great big bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with the bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged too many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. So in the bear went.
Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled onto the one space left and made herself comfortable on the great bear's nose. So there sat the middle mouse. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. A, uh, a, uh, a chew. The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten, silhouetted in against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, Baba saw, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, he, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. Then she saw that he still had his new mittens. The end. So let's reflect a little bit. So what caused the bear to sneeze? It was the meadow mouse. She was laying on top of his nose and her whiskers tickled his nose and made him sneeze. And what did that sneeze do? It caused all the animals to scatter outside of the mitten. And what happened after the mitten fell into the sky? Nikki found it. Nikki found it just in time when his grandma looked out the window. So let's take some time to do an activity. We're going to need a piece of paper, something to write on, and a marker, pencil, pen, anything in your favorite color. So today we're going to be drawing some thankful mittens. And here is an example that I drew and I will be helping you guys with how to draw a mitten. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a mitten together and anyone in the family can do this and follow along. And inside the mitten, you're gonna leave enough space to draw something you're thankful for. So something I'm thankful for is family. So I drew that in my mitten. And you can decorate your mitten however you want. I added some stitching along the top, some ruffles on the bottom. So let's get started with how to draw a mitten. So let's follow along. You're going to take your pen, pencil, marker, and you're going to draw what looks like a frown. Make sure it's a pretty big frown, just like that. And then, once you have that, remember a frown goes up and down, like an upside down U. Then, we're going to take our marker and we're going to draw a little frown next to here. Just like that. Make sure it's attached to this big frown on either on one side. Just one little frown here. So once you have that, we're going to have to connect these two. So we're going to take our marker and we're going to draw a great big smile or a really big U. So we're going to take it from there and we're going to draw a great big U and connect it there. And there's your mitten. Now if you want to add some decorations, you can add some stitching up top, but make sure to leave some room in the middle. You can add some zigzags on the bottom. You can add some polka dots. Make it fun. This is your mitten. And next inside, we're gonna draw something we're thankful for. Since it's the holiday season and this year's coming to an end, let's reflect on things that we're grateful for this year. It could be your family, your friends, your dog, or even a slice of pizza. I think that's what I'm gonna draw. I think I'm thankful for a slice of the pizza. 
So we're going to draw what we're thankful for inside of our mitten. You can label it pizza. I think I'm just going to leave mine as a slice of pizza. You can write, if you did family, you can write all of your family members' names on top of there. Take your time and have fun. And encourage your family to do this. Because then you can go around and share what everyone is thankful for in their thankful mitten. And I hope all of you guys have a really safe and relaxing Christmas break. And I can't wait to see you all one day. Okay, bye!